Hello and welcome to Chandra.org. In this video, I am going to show you how to build an interactive project plan or Gantt chart using Excel. Before we get into that, I thought I could show you my new recording studio setup. Again, this sounds super fancy, but essentially it's just uh, a computer webcam and a couple of lights and a mic stand. <laughs> Uh, I have been uh, slowly upgrading the recording equipment that I have uh, because I enjoy making videos uh, for both YouTube and for my online classes and I figured uh, I might as well just um, you know um, learn more about the craft and slowly acquire the materials that will help me produce uh, better quality videos and content. Now let's get into our uh, work for the day, which is interactive project plan or Gantt chart. Uh, we will be using um, uh, tabular data, that is data in the tables, and then we will also be using uh, pivot table slicers to make the Gantt chart interactive and a little bit of conditional formatting to develop the Gantt chart. So those are the key ingredients. Uh, while uh, this lesson walks through the process of creating the Gantt chart, uh, you will not be really learning the underlying techniques of how to make a slicer or how to get started with conditional formatting. So for those concepts, please refer to the other videos uh, and feel free to download a copy of the workbook so that you can practice or uh, you know deconstruct it and learn more let's get into it so this is our interactive project plan or gantt chart let me first quickly demonstrate what we have here uh, this is a project plan again randomly made up um, for for a project that has 100 activities split into five different modules so you can see the project plan for all of the modules you can just clear the slicer and you will be able to visualize everything or you can pick one of the modules at a time and then visualize how that module is progressing which activities have already uh, you know were before today and which are ongoing and which are yet to come uh, in a very mm, simple manner uh, this uh, uses as i said earlier uh, a couple of different concepts slicer for slicing the dashboard or the project plan and uh, conditional formatting to visualize the gantt chart and table to keep the data so let's get into the construction process here is the sample data uh, obviously you need a module and activity and then a start date and end date Potentially, you can also have another set of start and end dates. So you could have like a plan start, plan end, and actual start and actual end date. Uh, and you can even tag the activities as different types, like you know, a milestone or um, a regular activity or um, you know, testing activity. One of those kind of things, depending on what else you have there. But I'm just keeping it simple so we can focus on the concept first, and then you can go ahead and add those things. In the download workbook so the very first thing that you want to do is take this and build a pivot from it I've already done this so I'm just going to walk through the process so we will make a pivot in the pivot row label area we will place the activity and then in the values area we will place uh, start date and end date now whenever you put dates into pivot table I'll show you what happens usually pivot table wants to have just a count because it's a date and pivot doesn't really want to do anything else with the date but what you could do is you can right click and then you can say summarize by min or max and that will basically give you a number value representation of the date you could theoretically also use a sum or average as well and because there is only one date per each activity it will be same uh, but it's best to use min or maximum that way uh, this this way there is only one date ever for any activity and then that's the 43984 uh, well if you go to the data you can see that this is actually supposed to start on 2nd of june 2020 it started on 2nd of june 2020 um, but uh, 43984 is the number representation of that date because excel dates are stored as numbers uh, 
uh, end max of end date uh, this way you will know when that is finishing so once that pivot table is set up you want to add module as a slicer on the pivot table that way whenever you pick a module only the activities for that module are shown all right so once this is done we can then construct our Gantt chart uh, I will actually create the whole Gantt chart from scratch in a blank worksheet so you will get an idea uh, but let's go and uh, start off by first fetching the activity start and end dates and this this is simply equal to and go to the pivot and get the very first pivot cell value okay so we will get the very first activity and then uh, we can drag this down the, it all depends on how big your Gantt chart visual needs to be and again what kind of data you have for the purpose of our exercise I have assumed that there will be maximum of 100 activities so if you have more than 100 you can just drag this down and it will automatically work so you just want to drag this down to 100 rows I'll just stop at 40 now as you could see when I uh, I have already filtered down to I believe module one so so this is uh, only having that many activities and there'll be a bunch of zeros underneath um, and this can be a bit of pain in in the final output so one way to fix solve this is we can just simply write an if formula so if uh, my pivot value is blank space just give me a blank space don't give the zero value else give me the value okay so this way it will automatically uh, ignore those zeros and it will give you these values so once this is there we just drag this two times and we will get both start and end date now these are dates so we can select this and format the cells and quickly turn that into the date format so we can just pick one of these formats that will work for our data and uh, we will have start date and end date so once this is done uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep my ribbon on we can calculate the duration of the activity also which will be just end minus start or if you want to calculate the duration in number of working days that is Monday through Friday or whatever maybe your working week and ignore any public holidays or something you can use the network days function or network days dot intl it doesn't matter which one events are Saturday and Sunday uh, but if you have more fancier weekends uh, then you can use the networks days.intl so we will pick the start date and end date and uh, this will tell me that there will be six working days whereas if i just subtract i might get seven or eight as the answer so we will get that again these values will be because it's trying to do network days between two blanks and that'll give an error so we could use if error to suppress those errors and and then that will be there so once this is there we can add a quick uh, data bar around it uh, so that we can also visualize these numbers as uh, like which project which activities have most duration and which ones have least duration and that will add a little bit of more uh, flavor and visualization uh, depth to the thing the next bit is really tricky one and it's not that tricky but it is where uh, the most the Gantt chart is getting constructed so we want to visualize the calendar view or the Gantt chart here so one way to do this is first thing you want to figure out what what size of grid you want to have let's just say I want to see the Gantt chart for three months or 90 days roughly so you want to select 90 columns just uh, keep dragging until you pick 90 columns um, and then um, once they are all selected just size them maybe around 10 pixels uh, this all depends on how big monitors you have and what what is the thing that you want to visualize for my screen settings I can say that maybe 10 pixels is good enough so this is 1000 pixels or 900 pixels and that's still not big enough that you know there is more things I can show around it so once this is there then uh, we pick one of the cells above and first figure out what is the minimum date that we need to start off this the lowest date because uh, when, when I'm displaying the calendar view I want to really start off from a date and then go 
in the next day fashion so we could put a, any random date for example i want to see my project from 1 july 2020 i can just put that date um, but a better option would be just uh, use min formula and get the minimum starting date across all the items in the project this way you know the this is actually tied in and then the next day will be plus one Again, you can just do a plus one or you can use the network day or work day function to get to the next working day. It all depends on how you want to do it. I used work day um, option with one. So that will give me the next working day. So then we just drag this one sideways and then we will get all the 90 working days. So it's not even three months. It's going to be more than three months because uh, 90 working days could be about almost four months of time. Um, and then once those dates are there, we will make a copy of those dates by just saying equal to above cell. Now you might be thinking, hey Chandu, this is all blank. Where are the dates? The dates are there, believe me. It's just that because the cell is too small to show anything, Excel just shows it blank. But if you kind of reduce your font size enough, it will eventually print that hash symbol indicating that uh, there is a value there and uh, you can hover your mouse on that and you can see that. Okay, so the dates are there uh, and uh, you might be thinking why two rows of them? Why can't just one row? This is because we could use two rows to one row for showing the month name and one row for showing the day name or day itself uh, because the cell is too small. We can't really show everything. So this way it will give you more space to lay these things out. All right. So once that is there, we select the bottom one, press control one, go to format custom and then just say D. So here I just want to see the day of the month. Even at this size, I can't really see anything. Um, for example, if I go to seven pixels font size, I can see some of the dates, but when it goes to two digits, uh, it's not fitting in. So this is a, a problem. Uh, one alternative is you can make the columns wider. Another alternative, this is what I have used in my, mm, my worksheet here is instead of showing every day we will show one day next day is just delete and then merge these two um, so that there is enough space to actually show um, the dates so we have we don't need to be reminded that two three four it can just skip one day in between and it will still be reasonable and this way you can also actually increase the font size and whatnot all right, so this is uh, one method. Uh, same for month name also you can apply. You can insert another row in between and then merge five cells at a time and apply MMM format to that and that will give you month name. You do need the running nates in a cell. So that's what we are going to refer. So once this is done, we just pick the top corner and go to conditional formatting new rule. So here I want to highlight this cell if activity 001, the corresponding activity in that row, is happening on that date. So that date would be, let's say, 2nd of June 2020. Obviously, this needs to be highlighted because activity 1 has started on 2nd of June, so it needs to be highlighted. Uh, and so essentially, in conditional formatting, we want to check whether to highlight a cell or not uh, through the formula. The formula goes like this. We want to pick the start date and end date and compare it with that date and then see if that date is in the middle. Okay, it could be at the start, end, or in the middle, anywhere. As long as it's in the middle, uh, we want to highlight. That means this activity is happening on that date. So there are multiple ways to check that kind of a middle condition. I normally use median formula and pass on all the three dates. So median of that date. Now it is giving an absolute reference. This is not what we want. We just want to refer to column C and column D and then row number two. So this is the convention is equal to, so is the median or the middle point of those three dates same as my current date. So if this is matching, then we will highlight. This rule might look a bit uh, complicated, uh, but I recommend that you download the file and play with it to understand how this rule is really working. And once you understand that, then it becomes very, very easy. So this is uh, the basic rule, but we need to also think about the situations where there is no date. So if there is no date, then no need to highlight anything. 
because otherwise what happens is excel will always highlight it so i'll show you what what this will do if i just drag this down uh, let's go here i don't know how long we have okay that's the last one and then um, copy the conditional formatting and uh, paste it in all of these so it will paste but wherever there is nothing it will always highlight because uh, these are two text values so median will always be same as that date and it will highlight so this is actually a problem to fix that problem we just go to conditional formatting manage the rule and add an end condition in the front and my column C is not blank not equal to empty spaces so this way um, it should have some date and then only the median will kick in otherwise nothing will happen and it will just stay as it is okay so that kind of fixes that problem and uh, we now have our Gantt chart ready you can add a bit more cosmetic things around it for example um, you can go and um, select everything and then um, apply borders around the cells for example I, I normally don't put borders around everything i just put borders uh, uh, in the in the horizontal direction and uh, and when you disable the grid lines then it will be easier to kind of follow through and read uh, another good idea is to highlight the every other row in a in a dull color this is called zebra lining and you can add another conditional formatting on top uh, to basically uh, check the row number and whether if, if the row number is even then uh, highlight it uh, you know that's the kind of thing and then once that is done you can also add additional rule to check if the current row sorry current column has uh, today's date if so highlight that column in a different color this way you know where we are currently and uh, what happened before and after so this is actually working at a daily level if you want to kind of take it up to weekly level or monthly level you can again apply uh, conditional formatting to check on that uh, all you have to do is change your calculation so instead of work day or anything you would add plus seven to go to the next week and always do plus seven and then apply your between conditions in a different way to check if a given activity is happening on any given week or not so those are uh, some of the techniques i hope you found this particular uh, approach of creating a dash uh, sorry a, a interactive project plan interesting and useful if you like it give me a thumbs up and uh, tell me uh, which part of the um, process you enjoyed most in the comment section or give, give me some suggestions on what else would you do differently or what other things you prefer to add to this uh, thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you again in another video bye bye